Hi guys, it's Scott here and welcome to the second video in the series on decision making. In this video we're going to show you how to develop rankings for the different criteria which you're using to judge your different concepts by and if that's not enough to figure out which is the best concept then we'll show you how to extend that further and develop values for each of these criteria and then give them scores and these scores can be used uh, in the next couple of videos where we do some more formal decision making um, processes. So the first step, as I said, is to look to see if we can just rank our different options that we're considering to see if one is a clear winner on every different criteria. So I've got two examples here uh, that we've come up with via creative solution generation techniques. We've got our conventional peg over here, and we're going to consider for the moment that we didn't eliminate uh, this sprag and c-clip option in the previous videos. Let's consider that it's still on the table for the sake of this example. So the first step in this process is for us to go through and rank the likely order of criterion measures for each of these two options which we're considering. So if we look at the first performance requirement being strong grip and pull-off force, we can rank these two concepts under consideration. And we would rank this option number one because it has a higher pull-off force than the conventional style sprung peg, which gets a number two. In terms of ease of use, we might consider that there's a lower force required to use this peg, and so that would be ranked number one, and this option number two. In terms of long life, we might think that the Sprague option is going to last a little bit longer as it's made from more durable materials compared to the plastic peg. And if we jump down to aesthetics, we may look at this and think that, yeah, that's pretty cool and innovative and different, so maybe it would rank higher on aesthetics. In terms of cost for this option, we can imagine that there'll be much less tooling involved to produce this design compared to the plastic injection molded peg, and so that would probably win in terms of low cost as well. So in this case, neither of these two options is ranked number one in every single category, so we're going to be required to come up with a compromise. We can see here that this option came second in terms of ease of use, and so we're going to have to look at our values and look at our scores and maybe even our weightings later on to decide whether this is actually the best option for us to go with. So the next step in this process, if we can't rely on the rankings alone, is to now place likely numerical measures on the criteria where they're most accurately known. So we're going to have to have a guess at some of the values here at this stage. So we might start by guessing that the pull-off force for the conventional style peg is about 30 newtons. In terms of ease of use, we might estimate 3 newtons to be able to apply this peg to our wet washing. We might guess 500 iterations or cycles before this peg breaks on us, or is no longer capable of holding the washing with acceptable tension. In terms of aesthetics, we could probably rate it, say, 2 out of 5. It's not a spectacular looking peg, but it's good enough. In terms of cost, that gets a little bit difficult because we don't have a whole lot of information or experience in this case on what it might cost to develop the tooling and the production for each of these pegs. So we're going to leave that as a question mark for the moment and come back to it in a second. If we now go over to the other concept, we can start adding values there. So given that we've ranked this concept higher, in terms of strong grip, then naturally this force should be higher than the other concept there. So we're going to put 50 newtons on that one as an estimate. In terms of ease of use, it's probably going to require more than 3 newtons here. So let's guess 5 newtons for that one, right on the specification um, of what's acceptable. In terms of long life, it has more durable materials, so we're going to go for 2,000 uh, cycles on this one. In terms of aesthetics, we might rate that 4 out of 5 and think it looks really good. Aesthetics is one of the harder things to judge objectively. And we come back down to this conundrum of cheap. How do we guesstimate what the cost is going to be of this option compared to the other option? Well, in these cases where we might not have a good absolute estimate of what the actual cost is going to be, the way we can get around this is just coming up with a relative estimate of the cost. And what we're going to do is we're going to assume that one of these options costs a given value or a given price of C to produce. And so this concept here, we're going to give the value of C for their cost, 
and then we're going to allocate a cost as a multiple of C to the other concept. So if we think about it, it looks like it's going to be a little bit more expensive. So I'm going to estimate it's going to cost one and a half times as much as the concept on the right. That will be useful for us in the next step. Okay, so now we have all of the values for each of the different requirements for these two concepts. So we've got the values here and the values here. The problem with this is they're all in different units. Some of them don't have units. Some of them are two out of five, like a percentage. And some of them aren't even absolute values at all. They're relative values, as we can see down here, for the cost. And so what we need to do at this stage to be able to make a decision based on these different requirements and criteria is to convert each of these absolute values that we see here into an identical unitless score, so a non-dimensional score. The way we do that is by selecting a suitable scale. In this case, let's go with 1 to 10. It's a pretty common one that everyone's familiar with. And we're going to use that scale all the way through for each of these different requirements. And we're going to turn these absolute values here into a score on the scale of 1 to 10. So obviously the highest score possible is going to be 10 out of 10. So we reserve that for the best possible criterion measure. So for cost, it's going to be the cheapest. Um, for strong grip, the strongest grip that we can imagine our device being able to apply to the washing. So we might think that 50 newtons is quite a strong grip and there's no device out there that we could possibly conceive of that's going to be better than that. So we're going to give that a score of 10. The lowest score is going to be reserved for the worst acceptable criterion measure. And so that's important to note, the worst acceptable criterion measure. So this is where we're talking, where we're just meeting the specification, we're sitting on the specification, and we're not being eliminated by it. So in this case, here where we've got a value of 5 newtons for the ease of use, our specification is 5 newtons or less basically here and so that's sitting exactly on the specification so we're going to give that a score of 1. The highest and the lowest scores are generally quite easy to allocate because you're at one end of the scale. It gets a little bit trickier thinking through how to allocate the scores where the value of each of these criteria is not falling at either end of the scale. That's where we have to do a little bit of linear interpolation and figure out what the score should be. So what we're going to do now is take an example of this first requirement here, strong grip, the criteria being pull-off force in newtons, and we're going to try and figure out what this conventional peg should score on this 1 to 10 scale. So if we take a look at this little graph that we've whipped up, we can see that we've given a 10 to the concept with the 50 newton pull-off force. So that's a value of 10 up here, and we know from our conventions that 20, which is our specification here, that's going to be returning a value of 1. And if we draw a line between these two points here, we should be able to work out and read off this graph what any other value along this range is going to be. In this case, we've got a value of 30 newtons here. So if we dot that into our graph, it would look something like this. And if you imagine that we've got 1, 2, 3 even increments here, and we're going from 1 to 10, in three other even increments, then this is going to fall on a value of four. So that's going to be our score that we can then enter into the table. So that goes there. We can now work through the rest of these and think about what the values are going to be for this first conventional peg concept. So if we look at ease of use, we've given this concept for five newtons, which is right on the specification of value of one. Where would 3 newtons fall? It's going to score more highly than 1, obviously, but maybe it's not the best possible score we could have. Maybe you could do it with even less force. So we're going to have to guess a little bit, so that we're going to give that a value of 5. In terms of long life, we've estimated that this concept here may last for up to 2,000 cycles, which is very good compared to our specification of 200 cycles, so that's going to score highly. And I would roughly give it an 8. And by comparison, we can interpolate down from there to kind of estimate what this 500 would return. And so if you do the maths, it would come out at about 3. In terms of aesthetics, this is a pretty easy one to convert because we're, we've already got a scale of 5, so we simply double whatever values this is returning here and here, and that gets us our score for this category. 
and if we go down to cost we may estimate that this 1.5C is kind of middle of the road so let's give that a 5 which means that if this one is C then it's cheaper so it's going to score more highly but not as good as something that would be even cheaper still potentially so we're going to give that a value of 7 out of 10. So in this video we've shown you how to go about ranking your different concepts that's pretty straightforward and if that ranking system fails to yield a single clear winner then you have to go into a little bit more detail by putting some estimated values to these different requirements and criteria and from there non-dimensionalizing those values into a score which we can then use in the next step of the process to figure out which one of these concepts is going to be the best one for us to develop further. That's the end of this video. Thanks for watching.